it's gonna be like R and B, pop, hip hop, dance, fusion because I come from Europe, but I'm greatly influenced by all the music that's played in today's clubs here in America. At the same time, it's gonna have like interlaced, conscious lyrics because I'm 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 a person who's pretty deep when it comes to like what's going on in the, in the matrix of this world <laughs> and uh, so I like to like put something in there that has some substance rather than just talking about ass and getting drunk and you know some of the more sort of shallow lyrics you'll hear in some other pop R&B artists yeah mostly writing myself just because unless a song comes along that like really you know hits me as like wow that's awesome um, the problem is, is that someone who just thinks oh that's a hit you know and it looks good with you that can actually be a, a problem because um, you know you're now in a situation where you've got a hit but it's not really representing you and your heart and who you are well it was an interesting experience first it was lots of excitement as a kid I signed my deal when I was 17, Simon Cowell, who you all know from American Idol. And then um, for me it was kind of like, I was coming from a martial arts background, very disciplined, wanting to do everything right. And the lead singer was too, but a couple of the other guys in the band were a little bit more like, we just want to be wild, rock and roll. So it was kind of like conflicting lifestyle. So there was a lot of like arguments. I love all the guys. And I, I sort of really cherished the experience, but it was like we were all heading in different directions. Oh man, like ultimately I think I'm probably the, the, the disaster recipe for giving anyone advice. Well, I'm a controversial person, that's for sure. Just because I choose to live outside the parameters of what regular society would have us believe we should do and be. Um, when you're interested in chasing uh, philosophy, spirituality, you're not going to necessarily live according to the current culture. You're going to live according to the culture that makes sense in your own heart. So I'm going to get some of that. I've learned to get thicker skinned, a little bit more private, not allow um, everyone into my life because obviously I was allowing anyone into my life, um, just wanting to help them, personal train them, life coach them, whatnot. And sometimes, you know, it's like you can't lay down with dogs and not get a few fleas, you know? So it's like I have to be more careful, that's all. I think we start to learn that when we sign as kids, Simon Cowell sign us, 17 years old, traveling around and the gay clubs were booking us just more than the straight clubs pretty much so we started realizing that we had gay fans and uh, getting used to gay people because I was from a small town and I'd been told that gay people were the bogeymen and that they're just gonna rape you you know I mean that's what you're told <laughs> so uh, when when I had a gay manager who was managing Worlds Apart Gary and he was the nicest guy in the world and so respectful all of a sudden you know your perceptions begin to change the more you meet nice gay people and then what I have found is today that I actually prefer gay culture to straight culture yeah here I am a straight man with you know kind of a situation where women do you know give me more attention than most and then I prefer the behavioral patterns of the gay culture because they just tend to have more fun you know not that I personally want to be engaging in gay sex but I like the culture I like the gay people I like the music that they prefer to enjoy I like their club atmosphere I like the the wit the humor the fun it's just I wish more straight people especially straight men would wake up and realize that gay people are here on this planet to almost educate and teach and and give the humanity, uh, uh, a spice of fun and enlightenment and joy that I have found they give me. And yeah, I found it through 
them being my fans and so some people go oh yeah well you just you just love it because you got muscles and they're worshiping you you know but at the end of the day when you have deep conversations with gay men for the most part they've been through a lot of adversity from being the current most ridiculed culture uh, you know back in the day it was the Jews and then the blacks and then the Asians and then the gay people are in a situation where they're still trying to fight for their rights and so that's uh, something that has conditioned them to be more resilient in a sort of spiritual manner and because of that there's a lot of depth to them and they say that when a culture has been given a lot of adversity they are forced to rise it's like the gym if you put if you put the uh, muscle through stress it gets bigger and stronger when Hitler was putting the Jews through all that adversity they had to become survivalists when um, black people were taken from Africa and turned into slaves you know they had to become resilient and stronger um, so it's like currently you have the gay population that's being to some degree oppressed by you know your right-wing conservatives so what do they have to do they have to become better at campaigning for their rights and their freedoms and their their uh, ability to have validity on planet earth now when you're a person who has a humanitarian heart like myself you naturally want to help or be a part of anything that gives people the right to be themselves because at the end of the day you know we're all equal so that's why I really do resonate with the gay culture. I do appreciate the love they give me. Yeah, they give you worship for being in great shape. I mean, what's wrong with that? I had um, lost a car, an apartment, and even my reputation and my job all in the same week. I'm sitting there in Florida with a hurricane and I needed money, so I basically went down to the local strip club. This this girlfriend that I had just started dating took me there and said, you can make all kind of money up in here. Just threw me up on the stage in a thong. And I did start making money, like, fast. But I was crying, you know, like, that day, like, I sold myself to be a whore. Um, so then I started to, like, research, you know, why I had such an issue with nudity and looked into the Greek Olympics and how the original Olympics were nude. <laughs> Shamans in Africa are, uh, you know, always dance around their fire nude. And I just started to investigate why this culture has so much of an issue with nudity or sexuality. They love it, and yet they're so afraid of it and ashamed of it. It's kind of like, it's, it's a human basic urge and need to get some form of, like, sexual titillation because it's part of our our primal instinctive need just like we use the bathroom or need food or need air we need we need that sexual titillation we need that um, sexual energy in our lives to, even if it's just a flirt you know but at the same time there's so much shame involved in it because of the repressed Western conservative Republican culture you know I was um, trying to help a girlfriend who was, you know, getting out of porn and uh, she had basically lost all of her income so it was a case of trying to help her make her car payments and help her get herself back on track and um, it just one of my friends who was dancing with me at the straight clubs decided to, he was obviously making money over the gay clubs and he was like, look how much money I'm making, so I went over there checked it out, watched just like this and saw that he was making a lot of money and saw that he was being treated oddly enough with more respect than we get treated at the straight club by the women the women are quite crazy they get quite crazy and drunk and scream I work for a company called Hollywood Men and it's pretty crazy like when you jump down into it, it's like a sea of women that are you know on their hen night out or bachelorette party and when women hire or play with strippers it's more of a hysteria type environment so it's like scratching screaming and uh, you know 
they're having fun, of course, but it's a little crazy. Whereas with men, they're more into worshipping your form, your shape, or even having a conversation. And they're usually an older, mature crowd, and they just tip you better. So, just being a person who analyzes energy, I was just like, well, this isn't as unpleasant as one would have thought. And then you start realizing that you start having friendships with these men who are gay, and you start to really care about them and love them as people, and then you realize that your own homophobia is being broken down through your job or through your interaction. And the reality of it is, is like, we were all instilled with this homophobia. And then the more interaction you have in a gay club, the more you realize this is pretty much harmless. But you know, I think mid-America and conservative Republican America has a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> so someone like myself would appear very uh, radical or they would just say, oh, whatever, dude, you're gay. So they'll put me in the same category as a gay man. And I'm, I'm cool with that because I'd much rather be co considered gay than ignorant and straight. <laughs>has nothing to do with anything that I've accomplished. I would simply say that being, uh, being as present as possible as a human spirit is probably the best thing I've done.